Okay, so everyone, hi. Thank you uh, for joining in my session about technical documentation. I know it's not the most exciting uh, topic here in the conference, but I will try to make it as uh, exciting and enticing uh, as possible. So first of all, uh, my name is Hila Fish. I'm senior DevOps engineer and the work for Wix. I have 15 years of experience in the tech industry. Um, I co-organize conferences in Israel where I live, DevOps Days Tel Aviv and Stats of Point on Conference. And uh, let's get right to it because I don't have much time and I have a lot of things to cover. So, I believe that anyone can and should write technical documents because in the middle of the night, when I have an incident that I need to manage in production and I don't know what to do and there is a run book that helps me uh, fix the issue, I don't care if the run book is written in a lousy English or a fabulous one. As long as it helps me solve the issue, this is all I care about. So. If you have uh, knowledge, just share it. It will help you, it will help the future you, and it will help uh, other team members and everyone because share, sharing the knowledge helps uh, in a lot of things and I will cover uh, what other things um, are helpful uh, in that. So, as I like to say, um, if you can't automate it, then document it. A lot of things that we do in our day to day can be uh, considered as uh, technical documents, things that we write. So system logical design is, of course, it's like the straightforward thing, but also the on-call runbooks, as I mentioned, a code readme to understand the intentions, reasoning, flows that are not really clear in the code itself. Onboarding documents, if you want to start a new com company and you don't maybe need a buddy to help you uh, onboard to the new role, if you have onboarding docs, then it will be good and people can onboard themselves. A project planning doc to, to plan any projects that you need and even Slack pinned messages, okay? If you have knowledge sharing, just share it whenever you can and wherever you can. And if you, even if you can't practice the, all of these and you can only contribute in some of those, it's still better than nothing, so please uh, share the knowledge. So, uh, you know, uh, with the raise of hands, everyone, if you ever said this sentence or heard this sentence before, my code is self-documented. Okay. <laughs> Right? Yeah, so there are a lot of uh, hands that were raised here. That's the thing. A lot of people say, hey, my code uh, tells a story, or uh, just read the code and understand what it is about. False, right? It is a lie. Um, so we all know it's not the case, and we do need to uh, document our code in order to understand the reasoning behind it. Um, how things in the code itself behave, why did we chose this and not that. So we always need to uh, document our code in order to be very well uh, understandable. So if I didn't convince you until now, let's cover some um, reasons why write uh, technical documents. So first of all, it will reduce your work volume. And when I say reduce, you can say, hey, wait, but if I manage or invest time in writing documents, it doesn't reduce my work volume, it increases it, right? Because I spend time on writing the documents. So I will give you an example to, uh, to convey what I mean. In my previous job, as a DevOps engineer, a lot of people approached me and said, hey, uh, help me troubleshoot this uh, pod in Kubernetes, it's red, I don't know what to do. And a lot of issues that kept on repeating. And I got like, a, uh, people approaching me seven or eight times a day about the same things. So I gathered all the repetitive questions. I created a document for them called Tips and, Trip, uh, Tips and Tricks by DevOps. I shared it over Zoom. I go, went over all the things that I went there, that I, that I wrote there, and then magically, after giving and sharing this document from seven or eight times a day, they uh, approached me only one or two times a day. So this is what I mean, reducing your work volume. If you invest in it one time, then people will be, uh, which leads me to the next uh, bullet, self-service. People will have self-service and then they wouldn't bug you at work because they know exactly what to do and they don't need you uh, for that. So self-service enablement, which basically also means increase uh, their velocity. So the example that I gave you is one example. Uh, when I did a migration of GitLab, I also created a document of uh, how to onboard to GitLab properly because they didn't know GitLab, so how to change the local repository to work with GitLab and go over certain um, functionality of GitLab. So that way it helped them adopt the, the, the uh, 
software better, like GitLab, because they didn't know it. So adopt the software better and faster. And also other examples, like onboarding docs. Okay, this is like the embodiment of self-service they can because they can uh, onboard, onboard themselves. Uh, in terms of their velocity, so any doc with troubleshooting will increase velocity. And even Slack bots, if you have Slack bots that uh, answers like Q&A, will help uh, increasing velocity. Eliminate production incidents uh, quicker, as I mentioned, on-call runbooks will help uh, both um, decrease MTTR, mean time to resolution, help the company uh, meet the SLS, and help you get back to sleep, and we all want that. Uh, avoid single point uh, of failure or bottleneck, which is you. So I'll ask you one question. I, I believe it is a rhetorical question. Do you want to go on vacation on a clear head or do you want to be available for work calls, right? We don't want that. We want to be able to go on vacation and just be uh, able to forget about work. And I will say it's also here, job security is dead, okay? just. AI will take our jobs anyway, right? So just let's prevent it from happening and help each other by sharing the knowledge and don't bother up all the information that you know. Share it, it will help and benefit everyone. Another reason is that it will help uh, make things clear for you or the future you because when you, once you structure things and write them down in a clear manner, then it will organize it in your mind as well. And also, all the things about intentions, reasoning, and anything that is not straightforward um, about whatever that you do at work can help uh, manage uh, your systems better because then it is uh, documented and you know exactly what needs to be uh, done and it will be clear for you and the future. Visibility. So anyone here that really cares about their career and treat their jobs as career and not just jobs, it will, uh, writing documents about what you're doing and uh, documenting things in general will attract focus to the things that you do uh, at work, uh, which in turn will help you uh, progress your career. And also, it is a very good tool to communicate things to managers because this will show the extent uh, of your work if you're a team player, but an actual team player, not just something that you write in your CV. So that's uh, exactly that. And last thing that I want to cover here is that it will really help you understand why are we doing things uh, in a certain way. So the GitLab migration that I did, I did it uh, entirely by myself, and I knew that my team members need to um, maintain GitLab as well. So I did uh, a document for them, basically, and for everyone, everyone that needs to uh, maintain the GitLab, and I explained them why the certificates are set in a certain way and, and how. Um, if, uh, for example, for Terraform, we also uh, document uh, Terraform code, why is the model complex? Why did, I, uh, did we chose to do X uh, instead of following clean code practices like uh, do not repeat yourself and keep it simple stupid? So all of the things are uh, basically there to help you defend the decisions that we are taking and communicate them uh, to others. And also, by asking why uh, repeatedly and documenting the why in documents will develop your business uh, mindset and will make you a better engineer because always asking why will result in you striving for the best solution or implementation possible. So, I really hope that I was able to convince you why writing uh, technical documentation is important not only for your surroundings but also for you as, as an individual. So now let's understand how to write uh, technical documents without being a technical writer because we didn't know, we didn't learn literature in, in high school, in, um, in college or whatever. But we do want to write documents and it doesn't matter if we have the perfect English or not. It doesn't matter. So let's see how can we do it to our best ability. So first of all, first phase, know your audience. Based on your audience, you will know what needs to be covered and to which extent. And basically, if I need to write stuff for internal use, I would like system design, or external use, like uh, API documentation and uh, stuff like that. So based on uh, my uh, audience, uh, I will plan what needs to be covered. And you can start by doing it in bullet points, just to know what you're going to cover, and then uh, do it uh, once you start to write the document. So, what do I write about in terms of internal use for maintainers of systems and stuff? So, things you worked on while working on them, because we remember things better while uh, they're still fresh in our minds. 
And even if you can't uh, document it through the uh, while you're still working on it, still uh, add it to the bullet uh, points list so you remember to cover it uh, later on. Things that bugged you for the GitLab migration that I did, I even documented a section of how to open a support ticket to avoid ping pong between us and support because I opened a ticket and then only after a couple of uh, ping pong they said, okay, send us loads. And I'm like, okay, I couldn't send you before and, and save the three days that went by. So I actually documented how to open the support ticket, including the logs uh, already, to save the ping pong. So anything that bugs you or should be covered uh, to help uh, maintain things easier should be covered uh, as well. And things that aren't clear uh, or straightforward. So I know I said GitLab a lot. Uh, they don't pay me, I, I, I assure you. But it was a good project that helps me uh, cover a lot of uh, examples here. So the GitLab migration. I chose to go with a certain DB version and not the one in the default. Why did I do that? I need to explain that to my team members because maybe they'll see it and say, they will think, ah, oh, it's a mistake or it's not really matters, so let's revert it. But I had a very good reason to choose uh, this version. So document why did I did it. Uh, and also, if the code is not clear, as I mentioned at the, at the beginning, explain the flow with describing actual functions. It will help everyone. For external use, uh, for both users or consumers that need to use uh, your API, for example, uh, cover what it is about, whatever you're, uh, you're writing about, possible use cases and quick start, any quirks, issues, or things to consider when using this X, and examples, both simple and complex, because we want to help our users uh, use uh, whatever they're using for their, to their best ability and to do it as much as uh, fast as possible because we want to send them back to their tasks as soon as possible. The next phase of writing a technical document is to decide or buy upon a documentation type. So uh, there, are both, there are two ways to write documentation. Either docs in a knowledge base like conference or the, I don't know if it's new or not, but docs as code. We do it uh, in Wix in which the Docs themselves are integrated in IDE, in the repository, and um, basically it is fully integrated in the dev tool chain. The developers don't need to leave the IDE in order to write documents, and I will cover uh, about it a bit some more in, later on. So uh, when I say decide or write upon, maybe you're not the decision maker and you can just recommend to go uh, and start practicing docs as code, but maybe it wouldn't get accepted. So maybe you need to still uh, keep at it with the docs in a uh, knowledge base. So whatever you should or could uh, do, just have in mind that docs as code is a very good option. So just decide or write upon the documentation type and start uh, practicing it. So now I'm going to cover the general content guidelines when you write a technical uh, document. So first of all, table of contents. Um, it is essential for a uh, content discovery. And why is that? Because uh, I read uh, an article from 1997 that people don't read, they scan. This is the user flow. So they search for something, and um, since it always starts with a search, you need to give uh, meaningful titles and subheadings to help the user find whatever uh, they are looking for. And then they uh, scan the document, see that if it's what they are looking for. If so, great, they found the result. If not, they will navigate to somewhere else so always make sure to include links to anything else that should be relevant to whatever you're writing about. And in regards to links, you can treat it like a microservices. So each document is standing on its own, but if there are any extension or they need to talk to each other, then you put a link to something else, like read further or stuff like that. So always have the user flow uh, in mind when you write a document. Highlight. So use bold, uh, because people skim through and, or scan the docs, and they don't really read them to the fullest, so help them uh, do that. And in regards to um, colors, it, it, it's a bit controversial because of accessibility issues. Some people have uh, color blindness and stuff like that, but in my experience, whenever I used colors, only then the developers, oh yeah, now I see the, the red thing. They didn't notice it before. So if it's okay and there are no accessibility issues where you are at, because it's like for internal use, then just um, utilize colors as well. 
words and sentences. So always aim and strive to use shorter uh, words and more sentences rather than longer words and fewer sentences because, again, people skim through the document. It will be, be very helpful and, and very easy to skim through the document if there are short words and more sentences. So always try uh, to keep that in mind. And the, my favorite, simple English, okay? People don't try to be Shakespeare, okay? Just, just don't. Uh, write simple American English that non-English uh, speakers can easily uh, understand. So let's cover Doctor's Code for a bit. Um, so first of all, all before I start, all the uh, general content guidelines that I shared is relevant for both uh, docs in a, in a knowledge base and Doctor's Code, and this is just an extension to it. So, uh, Doctor's Code is written in Markdown, uh, so it is um, basically helps you still to maintain a table of contents and use highlights, also colors. It is written in plain text, so it is human readable. It is easy, easy to write and diff, and it is platform agnostic, so you can utilize it whenever you, you really uh, want to. The docs is in the same a code repo, so it is integrated in the dev tool chain, and there's no need to leave the IDE, which for your developers is a good thing to have. And you can even do PR review uh, for documents to check for the doc uh, quality and even the, if the doc exists, because if not, you can fail the PR merge and say, hey, you didn't add documentation, so just uh, edit and then we will, uh, it will be able to uh, merge the PR. And also CI/CD. We think about CI/CD for microservices. We can do CI/CD for documents as well to check for validations and that there are no broken links and linters and stuff like that. Um, so a good tool for that is DocuSource. Uh, it also helps you push code to a front end to see uh, the docs in the UI uh, or a portal. But it also uh, manages validation and stuff like that. So this is a good, a good tool to use. And basically, this is a very good practice because we all know that maintaining pod, uh, documentation and making them up to date is very, very hard. So utilizing uh, CI/CD for documents will really help us uh, maintain documents and make sure that they are always up to date. Uh, the next phase that I want to cover here is uh, to remember your audience, right? Because I said that we need to know our audience. Now we need to remember them while we are writing. So have user flow in mind, in and between sections, and make sure that the document order that you are, that you are writing is from the most used parts to the very used parts. So uh, guess what I'm going to mention again? You're all right, the, the GitLab that I documented, I covered a lot here. So I started out with how to upgrade, because GitLab is um, releasing a lot of uh, updates to the helm chart, so this will be the most uh, thing that they're going to do. Then certificates, because it will be expired once in a year. Then integrations, because integration is something that you do only once and that's that. So have the user flow in mind, help them find whatever they're looking for very, very quickly, because we want to make sure that they are uh, in and out. Find whatever they want to and uh, continue with, the, with their tasks. Uh, another thing is concepts versus tasks. So think about what your audience wants. If they want to know something, concepts, then your document should cover information, background, explanations, reasoning, uh, intentions. But if they want to know, uh, to do something like tasks, then you need to cover a how-to, aka don't try to confuse the two, because if I want to do something, I really don't care about the, uh, the background at this point. So just, if it's a how-to, stick to how-to and then have a link to the background, uh, and the, the opposite uh, applies as well. The last phase, actually, is to share the document with others, because maybe things that we wrote is straightforward for us, but it's not straightforward for other people, because they didn't touch the systems as we did, or they think about things uh, differently. So share the document that you uh, have written to have like iterations and maybe they will point out, hey, this is not straightforward, please explain, or I don't know what this uh, uh, glossary that you mentioned is about. So feedback loop is very important when you write technical documentation because it will help you understand if you really nailed it for your reader's sake, if it's clear, if it's concise, if it's what they actually uh, need. And the next slide I'm gonna share, don't try to read it, okay? It's only for uh, taking pictures and uh, purposes. So 
I explained for this entire talk is that if you um, don't, if you want to write a technical documentation without being a technical writer, this is what you need to do. But if you do want to perfect your English, if you do want to make your technical documentation a, a, a bit higher uh, quality English-wise, then I consulted with a, a colleague of mine, a Joshua Schulgasser, he's a technical writer, and he provided some tips um, about that, so just take it and uh, utilize it however you see fit. So basically, that's it, and I want to uh, release you with a very uh, important uh, golden rule that even if you say, hey, I'm not a technical writer, I can't write documents and I don't know what you said here because, I don't know, I have a lot of things on my mind, the only reasoning that you need for uh, the reason of, I, I'm not a technical writer, hence I can't write technical documentation, is this. You don't need to be a technical writer because you have only one golden rule in mind. Provide readers with the information that they need and send them back to their tasks as soon as possible because the computation should always be clean, simple, and to the point. So whether I'm circling back to the uh, beginning, whether you have a lousy English, fabulous one, I don't care. Just provide the information that the people need, they will thank you, nobody will say anything other than, hey, your document was super helpful, uh, thank you so much. And one tip for uh, managers, if uh, there are any here, is that if you want to make sure the documentation is uh, existing and you don't, you're not able to integrate PR uh, like CICD currently and you want to do something right now, is to make sure that uh, documentation is integral part of a task. So whenever you open up a task in Jira or in Monday or whatever tool that you use, make it integral part of the task, aka the task definition of that is once the documentation was added. So I hope that after this talk, you can go uh, back to your work and write some documentation and say that now my code is well documented. Thank you so much. <laughs>